as well i'm excited to have two of my faves back on jr you're back we realized that you came on a long time ago 2021 i think yeah and in my head i was like like last year and then realized oh no yeah (laughs) that was that was much longer than that i can't believe i keep doing 2023 all the time without realizing rick it's it's been a lot of a less time you've been on recently or i feel like more recently talking about amazing optimization things that you guys have created so it's not been that long yeah, it's not been that long, and we probably need to get on even more because we keep launching a lot of stuff. So there's yeah. so many conversations to have. <laughs> yes, yes, and if you stick around till the rest of the episode, you will see us do a demo of something that's relatively new, came out of Reinvent 2023, uh, the Cost Optimization Hub. But before that, we are going to be chatting all about how AWS finally, and it feels like finally for me, like <laughs> joined. The Finance Foundation. So Wait, did that JR happen? I missed. I missed the news. Did you? You're like, oh, I, I didn't even notice. <laughs> this is so exciting. I mean, I, I've been a member of the foundation for such a long time, and I'm just very excited to to kind of get into it. So we're going to be chatting about that. We're going to be talking about events that are coming up with the foundation. We're going to be talking about what it actually means with Amazon being involved and just what the future holds. So with that, I'll do our intro. So welcome everyone to the keys to AWS optimization, the show where we share stories, concepts, and solutions to help unlock your spend at AWS. My name is Steph Gooch and I'm a senior optimization architect advocate at AWS here to help you with all your optimization journey and questions. So JR, do you want to go first and just do a quick intro of yourself? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, JR Stormont. I am the executive director of the FinOps Foundation. So I'm one of those weird guys who has a full time job at a nonprofit. I work at I work for the Linux Foundation, which is essentially <laughs> what we're part of. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been in the cloud cost optimization, cloud financial management, FinOps, whatever whatever term is your your favorite term um, thing for since about 2010 or 2011. Um, wow. So uh, very focused in this area for a long time. Uh, Co authored the cloud uh, FinOps book uh, in 2019, and then again in 21 <laughs> with. A bunch of people, including yeah, Steph, uh, did some great contributions. Actually, Steph and I was uh, at the risk of a long intro that's not about me. I, I was doing a little yeah. forensic deep dive into like when did I first meet or connect with you? Ooh. And I went back through my emails uh, and I, I found what I think was the first email, and it was June fourth, twenty nineteen, and it was a very wow. short email. And you were like, basically said, yeah, I had some technical issues trying to connect to this because uh, we had some foundation early summits. I couldn't get in. And I hear there's like a Slack thing I can get involved with. Can you give me more information about this? And and that was our first sort of engagement. And you were in another company at that point. But I, what I don't know if everybody knows is you were, yeah. when we started the FinOps Foundation in 2019, you were one of the first 26 people. And now yeah. the FinOps Foundation has like, you know, 16,000 practitioners around the world. So you were o- as OG as they get. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great to have this full circle back. And yeah, really excited to have AWS formally part of the foundation now. That is crazy that you found that email. I just, I kind of like vaguely, actually, Rick, sorry, let's uh, intro Rick because otherwise it's just been too three minutes. Rick, <laughs> just explain who you are. No, that's a cool story. Um, yeah, okay. My name is Rick Oaks. I, I work at AWS. Um, I've been here for about two years now. I lead all of the product teams for all of the optimization tooling. So that's reservation recommendations, savings plan recommendations, savings plan purchases. Uh, Compute optimizer, right sizing, cost explorer, right sizing, cost optimization hub. So anything that gives you a recommendation is probably coming through my team. Awesome. So before we just dive into what we were just talking about, I just want to shout out everyone in the chat. So uh, cost, any of us cost layer is in the house. Great, great to see you again. Um, uh, got all star crew today. Yes, we do. We've got the players. Um, also, a shout out the NYC Roadshow was great. So that's a great oh, feedback sweet. for you, Jeff. No, I just got back there. late last night. Yeah, we had uh, Roy Woolman from AWS on a panel there with a bunch of the community. So that was, that was cool. I'm glad somebody was there. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I hope JR has some special vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go slack some people to make that happen. <laughs> win a prize, win a prize. I wish we could do more of that. That's amazing. That um, yeah. So uh, I was going to say, the... how about that, Steph? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God. Oh, chat. We people don't know this, um, that we do a bad dad joke before we record. The goal is to make 
my guest smile. Um, I was just saying though on before we joined that the last guest that I had that I did it with, they did grimace rather than smile. So any bad dad jokes, put them in the comments. Uh, whether you're watching us live or from YouTube or your podcast on Spotify, please feel free to pop in a bad dad joke in the comments for me to read for my next guest and I'll give you a shout out. Uh, yeah, so JR, the I remember like so vaguely just like coming to the summit in uh, the pre Amazon summit and going to like a FinOps thing. It maybe it was a cloudability thing. I'm trying. It's like a, such a long time ago that I vaguely. Yeah, and that's how I got. Um, yeah, and, and you, I mean, you uh, contributed a bunch on the the book as well in the early days, and I and that was actually um, when when you first started joining the FinOps Foundation summits. We the whole reason <laughs> Mike Fuller and I, who's the co-author from Glassian, who's now the CTO of the Fennels Foundation, the whole reason we were doing weekly summits with the community and folks like you is like, we're trying to write the book and we're collecting stories. So we would basically, every week we'd have a call with the community and that time it would be like 20 people. Uh, and and we'd be like, tell us about your forecasting. Tell us about your optimization. And we would just like take notes. And, and yeah, you were a big part of that. So no, I love it. And the, I've still got my copy, which is just there. Um, the, I've got my little name in it in my background. So like just such great days, just thinking about the when we were just all kind of like, figuring stuff out so i love it um uh oh also another another comment come in uh i remember when finance foundation had a code for free t-shirts i'm wearing not one of the original free t-shirts but i'm like i'm coming branded on the call someone else pointed out that we got the woolen caps my one is there in the background uh loving the hats we joined a prep call i think rick you had an x shirt on i had a beanie and steve had a cap and i was like branded <laughs> Oh um, God. Um, also, oh, I've already got our first bad dad joke. Uh, have you ever had a bad sausage? It's the worst. I'm saving that. That's funny. I need to figure out how to save that. That's brilliant. Keep them coming in. Okay. So let's get into some chat about, um, about AWS joining the foundation. So maybe, I mean, Rick, you are like so important in this whole journey. So I don't know if you want to kick off about like what this means to you or what you're thinking about the future of this or, or even some background on us joining. Yeah, so um, so when I first joined AWS a couple of years ago, um, I they I had some really cool conversations with the leadership of Insights and Optimizations, which is the the organization that owns all of the cost visibility tools and all the optimizations tools. And it was a fun interview process for me, and and I got to ask a lot of questions of the leadership as part of the interview process, like, hey, what's our strategic uh, thinking about? how we engage with the community. How do we think about building free products to help people save money, right? These are really fundamental questions I wanted to know the answer to as part of what I wanted to do in my career. And, um, you know, it's really exciting being part of an organization that's super customer obsessed. And so this, this to me felt like a, a very important decision and step for us to make after joining AWS that engaging as a member of the community and being a part of a community that is very passionate and focused on cloud cost use cases allows us to invest uh, a lot more focused, um, focus, probably a bad word to use these days because of the initial, <laughs> but uh, a laser, you know, a very precise way for us to engage on specific use cases that we can then turn into features in our products. And so that's kind of like the root cause of why I really, really wanted uh, to get this connected up. Um, you know, there was a lot of people inside AWS that were very, very interested in working hard to make this relationship a reality. So we drew on a lot of people's experiences and goals and, and outcomes to put together our PR fact, which is an internal AWS document uh, called a, a press release and an FAQ. It's, it's two documents combined into one. We call them our six pagers. So we wrote the six pager on why we think this is a customer obsessed thing to do what benefit it gives AWS, what benefit it gives our customers, how, how this benefits not just uh, our backlogs and, and what we want to go build for our customers, but how our customers can create this new avenue of like 300 level advanced engagement where they can train each other, cross train, and you know, how are they doing these FinOps use cases, whether that's chargeback, showback, allocation, unit economics, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of course, my favorite the optimization use cases. So really being part of this community and allowing us to just become students, I suppose, of our most advanced customers and really just sit there and, and have an opportunity to learn from them and say, 
how did you solve this? You know, this is, this is not easy. Uh, a lot of different companies solve some of these use cases in very different ways. And that's cool. Uh, it's cool to see the creativity. It's cool to see the problem solving. And so for our, uh, our product management teams, my team directly and some of my peer teams to be able to join some of these summits, uh, FinOps X, some of these sort of, um, ecosystem and community events and just to listen and learn and really wrap our heads around where's the biggest pain where, where can we help what should our backlog look like and then to invest and really you know put our our backlog and our investment and our effort into solving the most important things for the finops community for and for our aws customers so that i mean that's the heart of why we really were, well, we were excited. We still are, we're excited to join the community, to engage. Now JR and I talk every week and it's great because he's <laughs> always pushing us to do more things, which is, I, I love it personally. <laughs> uh, well, JR I, is very, very influential, so it's great. Well, I, I gotta give you, I mean, Rick, you're always so humble. And I mean, Steph, you know some of the history here. Rick, I, I did also look forensically when we met and it was uh, April 28th, 2022. And our, our good friend Lee from NVIDIA uh, connected us. And I remember thinking, oh, it's another person from Amazon. We don't yet have them in the foundation. We'll see how this goes. And, you know, and we had a lot of our early team, Stacey Case, Rob Martin, they came out of Amazon. So we knew a lot of people there. Um, and I just gotta say, I mean, Rick, you, the way you approached getting the, uh, AWS into the foundation was so thoughtful, was so, it was such a, 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 a thoughtful and, and detailed process and, and doing it for all the right reasons. I mean, you and all of John Phillips team have been engaging so well around what exactly what you said, like, we want to hear from customers. We, we don't want to get in there to like push some message. We want to be in the trenches with the customers so we better understand their pains. And you've just been, despite you being uh, to, to show you go for, you know, you, you're one of the very few people who have been in product related roles in this space for what? seven plus years i mean you know yeah. this space cold <laughs> um and but you come in so humble to the meetings and you brought such humility to it uh and wanting to learn from those customers and so i just want to give a big shot like this thing would not have happened without without rick and, and your efforts so thank you for all, all the work you did that wasn't part really part of your job even to do yeah so. i just round of applause to rick i thought i would have done something like that. <laughs> that's i mean i'm very much both of you that this whole thing is amazing and I love how the great relationship you guys have and the exciting things. And I'm, I'm, like Rick said, I'm so excited because I feel like now I have like the freedom to go and talk to customers and bring more and things like we've we've asked for, oh, it's a good point to bring up. We've asked people to um, do things like fill out this survey if you have an idea for a Twitch episode. And uh, we mentioned that in the Thin Up Slack channel and it's like a freedom to go and get people. But we've already seen from the start of this year already, people us talking to more and more customers and like learning. And I love that idea that we're learning from our customers because you are the people out there that we want to hear from and, and make changes to. Um, all right, I've got to go. I, I know we're having such a sincere, lovely conversation about how amazing you guys are and all the chat is doing is giving me bad dad jokes. I've got to acknowledge some of these. Um, where's Rob's one? Uh, you can always identify a bad dad joke. It's apparent. apparent. Hey, there's Rob. Thanks, Rob. I just want to, Rob's the best. Um, where's the one? A, a duck logs into AWS Marketplace and says, give me some chapstick and put it on my bill. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand that one. It's like the bill. The, the, bill. the, the duck bill. Oh, oh yeah. okay, okay, a little okay, slow. Okay, I've got one to go on. <laughs> Why did the finance practitioners stop playing <laughs> the seat? They found all the hidden costs. That's a good one. I feel like apparently, I'm going to have to start these because like apparently we need to write the next book, JR, needs to have a back section that's just bad jokes oh, um, oh, man, about man. a FinOps. Can you imagine? Um, oh, this is nice feedback. I'm going to keep this one. One of, uh, one of the things I like best about working with AWS is they actually listen to our feedback. Thank you. I hope that okay, um, Mike. Rick, Rick, Rick does. He he tells me to go get more feedback. So we're I always do. doing that. I kind, of, um, I kind of harass her a little bit about it. I'm like, hey, go go bring me back some more customer oh, names. Cool. Do you know, okay, and as a, to make sure everyone sticks around for the second half of today's show, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about how you can actually do that. So stick around uh, if you're watching later. Last one, what does a baby computer call its father? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't read the end until I read it. Well done, Connor. That's my favorite so far. Uh, maybe, uh, my eyes water up. Okay, moving on. So, um, Rick, as part of our AWS joining, you are part of the TAC. Now, JL, do you want to just give a quick summary of what that is? 
Yeah, so the, the whole foundation is there to support the practitioners, the people doing the work of FinOps, cloud financial management, cloud value. And we've got kind of three actually separate boards and legal entities. So there's a governing board, which I work for, which does all the programs, you know, with, with training and community, all that stuff. There's a technical advisory council, which Rick sits on, that is a group that's purely focused on the best practices, the framework, the capabilities, the, the really technical parts. And then we have a third one, the focus steering committee, uh, which another AWS person, Roy Woolman sits on, that focuses on the standards and specifications. So Rick's on the one that sets the, the new framework 24 and, and changes to the, really the core of what FinOps is. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So Rick, how's it so far? Or do you want to share anything about what you're kind of hoping to do? Or, or is of, this... No, I mean, I'm happy to talk about the TAC. Uh, the TAC is full of a lot of really smart people. So the debates can go a little long. <laughs> oh, But it's, it's good because um, embracing like a wide range of opinions about different topics is important. Right, uh, we think about applying uh, cloud best practices back to like on on premise uh, use cases, for example. That's a conversation that continues to come up because some of these new workflows and ideas and concepts of cost management can apply. They can apply back uh, to maybe some older, more run in uh, workflows that the industry has sort of solved. But we can think about it in a new way and, and drive on prem closer to unit cost and things like that. Um, that's just one conversation that happens. I, I know like a lot of the notes and everything, they're all available um, in the FinOps Foundation Slack and whatnot. So um, feel free to dive in and, and take a look, but it's a good group of folks that all are working together to further the FinOps practice, the community, the the content. And um, it's, it's fun to be on and you have to be ready and willing to dive in with a strong opinion. So there's a, a, a term we like to use at AWS. It's called have a strong opinion loosely held. Mm, nice. And you have a belief system that is that that you've thought about and you've formulated and, and you and you come in with this belief system and you are ready to drop it very quickly. Um, and so I, I try to bring that to the tack. I try to bring to the tack kind of a strong opinion about something and then and then I listen and learn and, and ready to, to drop it very quickly because we need to gain consensus and really find common ground to create content or guidance that can help the community quickly identify value. So um, yeah, okay, I, you gotta post that latest comment. What, oh. What's a cloud's favorite game show? The price is right sizing. <laughs> <laughs> So if you if you have joined, uh, we've seen some people join. So uh, if you have joined and you're new to the show, welcome to Keys. We're chatting all about AWS cost optimization, and today we're talking about how Amazon has joined the Phoenix Foundation. But as a prompt, we asked for your favorite dad jokes, and we have gone down a rabbit hole of cost optimization dad jokes. So, what is your favorite game show? Price is right. Alex posted one as well. Let me give her her credit. Um, what do you call FinOps engineer who loves telling bad dad jokes? Steph Gooch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it says a custom oh. comedian, but I'll take that as my new Twitter uh, live, custom to comedian. Uh, I think it's a good one, but Seb Gucci is funnier, I think. Um, okay, so, um, and a couple of great little shouts. Thank you, everyone, in the chat today. You are smashing it. Uh, using AWS without FinOps is like trying to set a ship without a compass. You mind that I end up going in circles and wonder where your money went. I think that's a great analogy. Nice, critique. Nice. Hate that. Also, if you're new to the show, just a shout out that we hear here every Thursday and Make sure that you like, subscribe to this, or if you're watching on YouTube, then like and subscribe. And if you're watching on Twitch, subscribe to the Twitch channel. There are so many other amazing shows, so keep that up to date. Okay, so another big thing that happened last week, which we actually did an episode on, uh, we covered a bit on the last week's episode, was the state of FinOps. So I wanted to dive into this, especially, we've got JR, the man himself, who is in charge of this organization. We want to know what your thoughts are on the state of FinOps. Would you just want to say what it is and then maybe some exciting trends? That yeah, you yeah, definitely. Um, so state of FinOps is our fourth year of running this survey. Thank you for the link. I was just going to mention that. Um, uh, there's another link uh, that if you want to follow along at home that is the analysis of the state of FinOps that I'll share with Steph here. Um, this is something we survey our community. So really notable, this doesn't just go out randomly posted to LinkedIn. We go to the people doing FinOps uh, at organizations with large cloud spend. Uh, about 1,245 responses this year 
from people ranging from, you know, uh, I think the average cloud spend was around 44 million a year, but we had some up well over a billion dollars a year. So people really investing heavily in cloud across all the clouds. Um, and we asked them what their challenges are, what their pain points are. A lot of you have seen this over the years. Um, you know, this was a year of some big shifts actually. And, and honestly, I wish they were like shockers. I can't believe that happened, but it, it kind of makes <laughs> sense. So um, the, for the last couple of years, um, the top item, uh, top challenge for FinOps teams has been um, enabling engineers to take action, which speaks to, you know, it's not just about having data reports or recommend right sizing recommendations or whatever you have, like you've, you've got to get the organization, particularly the technical organization aligned around the importance of cost and getting it worked into their workflows. There's a cultural change. There's people being like, oh, wait, that's part of my job description now. It didn't used to be that way. Uh, so it's a long process. Um, but that shifted down a bit uh, and ultimately yeah, ended up to, to six. Just, yeah. yeah, someone just pointed out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, the, the things that popped up, which is the first time ever, uh, were reducing waste became number one um, mm -hmm. and managing cloud based commitments. <laughs> so it's like, Rick, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you yeah. want to say something? <laughs> um, so you could argue, Rick, though, that, that it's so challenging, they need better tooling still for it. And uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, more tooling. Job security. <laughs> yeah, our job security. So. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, the complexity of commitments has always been a thing that the, you know, advanced vendors and commitments being, you know, in AWS land, uh, reserved instances, savings plans, you know, negotiated agreements, anything you may be doing to commit to a cloud and then, you know, getting some discount as a result. Um, there's a lot of options. I was explaining to somebody last night on the plane back from the New York event, uh, you know, well, it's not just that, that there's hundreds of thousands of SKUs that AWS offers. There's like for every one of those SKUs, there might be 15 or 20 different ways you can pay for it in rates. And, and that's actually a good thing because it gives tons of flexibility, but it's a massive big data problem. So, um, you know, I, I think the dropping down of uh, engineering action um, a bit, you could see as a good or a bad thing. I mean, I mm -hmm. think when we started the survey, people were like, what the heck is FinOps? What, what are you even talking about, right? Uh, and then, and over the years, we've seen a lot of maturity of understanding of the space. I think the practice of being efficient in cloud has become a part of engineering work that are, you know, people who are working in, in cloud. It's become known more, uh, various degrees of adoption, buy-in, I think understanding. Um, but ultimately, I think people are trying to get more, less about trying to convince the organization or even telling engineers that this matters to more like, what are the outcomes we're trying to drive and the outcomes we're trying to drive right now? And keeping in mind why this wasn't a surprise, we collected this data, um, maybe incorrect me, it was the 2024 results, but it was collected at the end of 23. And it was a, a, definitely a time of economic uncertainty and a lot of noise and, you know, not sure what's happening. And a lot of, we're seeing a lot of layoffs in the industry, a lot of organizations trimming down. So. I think it was less that engineering action became less important and more that mm -hmm. everybody was being told reduce waste, you know, get the commitment styled in. And, and that just put it above those because when we got into detail, we still saw enabling engineers take action, show up at every spend size, at every company size, still in the top, you know, five or six list roughly, um, just mm -hmm. more folks into the outcomes. Yeah. And at the, it's interesting because like that, that getting developers to take action. I think our team in optics have focused on that. We use the state of evidence survey to very much like, I look at it from a Twitch point of view to make sure that the content we create kind of aligns to that. And so it's interesting now to go back to the waste stuff because I love talking about either waste. And so it's a great subject to kind of get back into for me. And we love having Rick on us talk about commitment. So it's interesting how that's shifted. Um, and we're hopefully going to kind of align with that. I'm going to throw this up again in case anybody has missed it last time. If you do have any suggestions about things that you want to share for what we should focus on, we are listening. Uh, and we want to dedicate more time and episodes to this. So please share your ideas in the chat. Um, but Rick, did you notice anything in the survey, apart, uh, like not necessarily the equipment's one, but like anything you wanted to, to kind of highlight or focus on? Yeah, so we, we use the survey a lot. Um, when we think about our backlog, when we prioritize our backlog, when we understand the biggest areas to focus uh, investing new features and capabilities into, um, I, I can't say that there was like any surprises. We, we talked to customers, gosh, I was on, I think four customer calls yesterday alone, but so we hear this a lot. Um, hey, you know, we need help. The, the cultural issue of trying to convince engineers to take action is actually harder than building the individual features and data sets to do the convincing as an example. And so we use a lot of this survey data when we write our PR FAQs for new features. Um, we also uh, had had a meeting with JR where JR came and presented all this data to our leaders as well to educate not just like the individual PMs that are building one-on-one -on -one features, but kind of the broader 
uh, organization within AWS. So we're all on the same page with what the industry is doing, where the, where the focus area is, things like that. So it, it's great. We use the data constantly in, in our decisions and our backlog and our features. I think for me, like managing commitments kind of bumping up is interesting. I think there's continued focus there. Um, you know, we did that um, video, JR, a couple of weeks ago where we talked about like commitments for um, commitment optimization versus usage optimization. We talked about effective savings rate and, and the combination, like where do you start? What's the, what's the great um, kind of first step you take in the world of optimization? And, and these are really important for us to get right and have a great experience for customers. And so making sure that we're solving these problems in the right order. Um, that FinOps survey data is very useful for us to double check that and, and continue to ask ourselves, are we doing this in the right order? Are we solving the problems for the, the customer segments that have the most amount of um, you know, struggle or gap here? And how do we do that? So um, we love that data. We combine it with our own data as well um, to, to check its validity, to make sure we're not missing anything. So that's valuable. You know, as you were saying that, something occurred to me with the engineering action thing and general changes in the survey and summary, which is there was a shift in the, the Tech Advisory Council combining new domains, which are going to be announced at our next summit in March, where they, they essentially merged what used to be an optimized usage and then it used to be an optimized rates domains. They kind of put them together. And, and, and I think there's been an evolution maturity in the market. You know, I mean, Steph and, you know, Alex had it, your team, all those. I mean, you're out there working with customers all the time. You know this more than anybody. Like, um, people have stopped, I think, starting about the individual actions, like enabling engineers to take action to reduce usage versus a separate FinOps team and optimizing rates. Like, we've seen that come together, right, in the thinking. Mm. Like, how do, which levers do we pull in a collective effort versus separate bits? And I, I think we're seeing some of that, you know, as a result. Yeah, and, and like, that discussion we had in the TAC, about combining usage optimization and rate optimization. That's really near and dear to my heart because a lot of organizations have went down the path of doing a lot of commitment management because it's easy. You don't have to engage engineers quite so much. You can just buy discounts based on usage and, and boom, yeah. you get 20, 30% off your bill. It's great. So it's such an easy open door. It's, a, it's your starting point for a lot of optimization. But then there's this ideal state world where you do a bunch of usage optimization, you do a bunch of right sizing or delete a bunch of unused resources. And so how do they work together? Right. And they should work together because if you, if you buy reservations for everything, it's like pouring glue on your whole environment. You can't move it around. You can't change it much. And so we need to do better bringing these together and making optimization, both commitment discount management and right sizing and resource management. So it's really great that the the entire industry, the FinOps Foundation in general, and all of us were coming together to say, these are actually kind of the same thing. They're all about saving money and using resources more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Interesting as well, um, and now I've lost the comment. Somebody commented in the chat that the hardest part was about um, commitments was the people aspect to it. And um, now I've totally lost where I put that comment. FinOps is not uh, a technology discipline. If it's a cultural yeah. discipline, right? It's changing hearts yeah. and minds and getting alignments, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Fox. The challenging part of commitments is the people aspect. So, especially if you're haven't got that centralized process, then I can I can see uh, the difficulty behind that. Um, again, thank you everyone for commenting questions in the chat. Um, I had some questions. Um, Trust and advisor makes things easy to find when it comes to waste. I'm assuming, and then Cloud Slayer they belong together. <laughs> I'm assuming that that means Trust and advisor, or maybe the rate conversation. Either either one yeah, of those. Yeah. Um, Oh, I realized Shadow Fox, Hi Wade. Someone's yeah. loving the bit mo loving the gif. Keep that, keep my gif coming up. I never see that anymore. That's me holding a giant dumbbell. Uh, if anybody cares. Um, is there any oh question? Is there any plan to add multi-group buy in Cost Explorer? Uh, feedback for Roy. I have to like get Roy on the call to answer that yeah, question. Yeah, he's gonna we'll write it down. We'll write it down for Roy. Um, <laughs> well, we'll thank you. Awesome. Okay, let's just do a quick, quick, quick poll before we go into our last section. Um, so question for the gang. Are you a member of the foundation? We haven't actually checked in. Um, one for yes, two for no in the chat. Hopefully we're going to see a bunch of ones, ones uh, for the yeses to pick that up. Um, but yeah, if there's any no's, you've got to go straight onto that foundation website and join. <laughs> 
Love it. Um, good. So we've got a lot of fans. We've got a lot of fans in the chat. Uh, as a reminder, any polls we do, type the number one to have yes, two to have no, um, so that it comes up on the screen. But we can confidently see lots of people are, are members of the foundation, which is which is great. Um, okay, so on to uh, maybe our last section, which is events. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a bunch of events. We've kind of named up some of us here in New York the other day. Uh, we've been mentioning them all the time. But uh, do you guys want to kick off with, uh, Jaya, what event you're kind of looking forward to the most for 2024 when it comes to FinOps? Oh, there's so many coming up now. It's, it's, it's hard to pick. Um, you know, at, at this point, we're already living, breathing, and sleeping FinOpsX in San Diego, right? That's our, our giant, giant one. And, and I think the, the, the coolest thing about this year is the most germane and relevant thing to this, which is, um, you know, we now have um, all four of the top clouds formerly part of the foundation. Um, mm -hmm. AWS is a headline platinum sponsor of the event. And what that enables us to do at FinOpsX this year is to get a ton of AWS thought leaders there, right? I know, I mean, folks from, you know, Steph and Alex's team and folks from Rick's team and Roy and Bowen, all these folks. Uh, but what what happens is now we have, we, we're giving these clouds and AWS has a bunch of this, room to do like deeper engagements, you know, like user groups and work with the product mm. teams and, and like lean in with the services teams and not just walk up to a booth and ask about, you know, whatever the marketing language is, but actually have, have deep, meaningful conversations. Um, we're hoping, fingers crossed, they don't tell me because, you know, uh, not NDA and all that stuff, but uh, we're hoping they're going to make some announcements. Uh, you know, all the clouds, we're, we're, we're offering all of them space to do that. Uh, looking forward to seeing, you know, uh, the AWS team there in force. And, you know, it is back in San Diego this year, um, but we've got uh, a couple of things we're doing. Uh, there's an event coming up in London. Steph, I hope you're going to be, I think you're speaking at our London event, aren't you? <laughs> yep. Uh, so we can post that in the chat, events.finops.org. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, tons of opportunities. And then Barcelona as well, FinOpsX Europe, which we're planning. So there's a, there's a lot coming and hopefully having the AWS team involved with all of them. Yeah, here, let me post the link in the chat. So look for your local events. Uh, recommend, highly recommend going to events. They are so much fun in a great way. Uh, I summarized FinOps X, how everyone said last year was, it was so nice to be in a place where everybody cared about what you cared about. And I guess it's kind of like the same vibe as what I think of things like Comic-Con, where it's like, if you're all really excited about like a character or a story or something, you can share that with a bunch of other nerds. And I think that's a great thing. Comic-Con for FinOps. I like it. I like it. Yeah, new brand. Comic-Con happens like just across the street from uh, yeah. uh, FinOps. I, I went to really, the museum yeah. when I was there yeah. last time. <laughs> Shout out to the guys I went to the museum with. Um, someone's just asked, I've been very active in FinOps Foundation. How do I achieve ambassadors, ambassadors oh, in India? Oh, good, good question. So uh, we consider uh, India what we call one of our tier low one locations that we see as strategic to the FinOps community. It's growing really quickly. So we actually are doing our first uh, sort of India tour coming up next month. Um, uh, Mike Fuller, our CTO, is going with uh, Dean Bashi from our, our team uh, as well. They're doing a Singapore event, and then they're also doing some events in India. We're trying to grow that community. So uh, shoot, shoot me an, an email if you want. I'm, I'm jr at finops.org and can make some connections. I don't, you know, we, I, we have some uh, presence there, but we're trying to do more because there's obviously like so much innovation and so much cloud work happening in India. So yeah, definitely a key mm -hmm. area for us right now. Yeah, we'll be putting all of our LinkedIn uh, hand, uh, stuff down below on YouTube. So make sure you check out our YouTube channel just to get that up so that everybody can, can follow along to keep up with anything afterwards. So you can follow everything in the show notes below. Um, Rick, what are you looking forward to when it comes to uh, events? So uh, we're, we're bringing as many people to FinOps X as JR will let us. Uh, so in, in the spirit of fairness. We have been having some conversations about that. Yes, yes. yes I've been, we've been pushing JR a lot on this one. Uh, we want everybody to come. And and I, I got to tell you, like, I think every single day I have somebody slacking me saying, hey, I want to go to FinOps X inside Amazon. I'm like, oh, we only have a certain number of tickets. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so it's <laughs> really tough to manage that uh, Rolodex of, of tickets that uh, Bowen, uh, our marketing manager and I, we've been working really hard to try to make it fair and distribute it across the ecosystem, but we are bringing a lot of product managers and we're excited about that. We're bringing product managers for Cost Explorer and Kerr and all of the optimization tools and you know my team. Um, and so we're really excited to not just talk about our products, but to listen and learn, gather a lot of intelligence on making sure our roadmap is aligned to uh, what the FinOps community needs. Um, but also we have a couple of, uh, 
sessions at FinOps X where we're going to be talking about some things. So uh, not intended necessarily as a plug for FinOps X, but if you're interested in the stuff that we're doing and you want to hear about the latest and greatest, go get your ticket. Um, as soon as you can sign up for sessions, you'll want to be in the AWS sessions where we talk about what's new for FinOps at AWS. Uh, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to say specifically, <laughs> but uh, I just really encourage you all to come. Ooh. We've been hard at work building lots of cool things, and we can't wait to show you all. I love that. A little tease. Yeah, come along. Come say hi. Oh, so yeah, guys, if anyone sees us, come say hi, obviously. Um, I normally have stickers on me for the show, so definitely come say hi. Yeah, we're going to have to bring a lot. we got to bring a few thousand stickers. I've, I've got to bring a lot of stickers. Alex knows I need to order more stickers. Um, speaking of Alex, she will be on in a second to talk with Rick about some more product stuff. So very last question. Oh, I didn't say mine. I'm super excited about uh, Phenom Sex and Beer. We're doing it in a beer. We're finally in Europe. First line. <laughs> We're doing it in Europe. I'm so excited. Um, also, like you said, all these things, I'm super excited that there are so many more events we can meet up at. Uh, at the London Community Day, I will be presenting. So make sure you come to the AWS session. And we're going to focus on waste. We're actually going to do a talk on that, about how to identify it, how to optimize it. I think we're calling it the five watts of waste. Um, oh. So, or something like that. Catchy alliteration title, as always. Um, very last question, quick fire, so we can bring Alex on, is best piece of swag from FinOpsX last year. JR, go. Uh, the fox. Fox has got to be the one that I love Where's the most. Fox? He's up there. I can see him behind <laughs> I have a five foot tall one sitting over in my office. Do you have, so you have the big YouTube? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's oh living here God. until the next one. Yeah. People were arguing about that fox. Uh, Rick, did you get any swag? Oh, I got, yeah. And JR's wife loaded me up. I, I think I left with an entire suitcase full of when I left. It was great. I, I think the glasses, the glasses are like the incredible. Glasses. incredible. They're polarized. Um, I gave them to my wife and she's using them, has been using them nonstop. In Seattle, we always have this really weird experience where you have to use your glasses in February because as soon as the sun comes out, because it reflects off of the rain from the freeway. So um, the glasses are definitely the hit for me. Although my dog does love the fox. My the dog's dog like it as much as the cats, it turns out. Yeah, the, yeah, the fox may, be, may be make your reappearance, but in a slightly different format so oh, okay Ooh. well so my yeah. dog carries the fox around with her everywhere she goes oh. and she and sleeps with it so i should probably take pictures and post them but yes and definitely and we'll there. come back okay. to that we'll come back to the pictures of animals in a second all right um richard bring up your summary um for us uh for me to read out as always we do a summary of our first section of the episode about uh optimization so i haven't seen these richard has been listening to our show um, a whole lot of love for Rick and JR. Love. Uh, a, a ton of puns. Yes, we've gone pun every episode. Year of shifts, reducing waste is number one. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to make sure you can identify more waste with keys. And so many of FinOps events, make sure you check them all out. Sign up. Amazing. Okay, that is it for this section of the show. But do not worry, we'll be back in a very, very short amount of time. We'll be bringing on Alex to talk with Rick again. We're going to keep him on to talk more about um, product teams and services and support requests and everything. But JR, thank you so much for coming back on. We've really enjoyed having you back. We hope you enjoyed yourself too. It was a bright, bright spot of my day. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Really good to chat with you both. That's so sweet. Okay, thank you so much. And we'll be back in two seconds. <laughs> There we go. Hey, Alex, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. That was a fun episode. Thanks. Well, we're not done yet. <laughs> Don't you worry. And in the chat, we've swapped over to bring Alex. Alex, do you want to quickly introduce yourselves to those who are here with us today? Yes, of course. My name is Alex Head, and I lead the optics team at AWS. So Steph is on my team. Um, my team partners a lot with Rick, which is what we'll get into but we are everything FinOps and everything efficiency for our largest customers. Awesome. So welcome to our FinOps fundamentals section. This is the blending theory together of practical insights to empower efficient management of your AWS spend. So a bit more of a theoretical conversation, but before we dive into that, I do want to say, touching on what Rick just said about his dog and the fox, I need to share with you something I saved, and I saved for Rick because I know he's an animal person too, was please check out my cat, <laughs> who has decided to subscribe to the channel, as you should too. Uh, 
so as as always just i thought a shout out if anybody's pets are watching please send me a picture and i will make sure to share that on another episode of twitch uh, our email is cost optimization at amazon.com we would love to see everybody watching the show subscribing and don't forget, you can now tune in to us not only on Twitch Live on Thursdays, but on YouTube. You can see us on Spotify as well. So you can listen to us if you want to listen rather than watch the video. But let's have a look. Or shoot it or, or add it in on LinkedIn or anything. Like, I mean, this is going to make our email box way more fun. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. tell us the weird pet names. I mean, we're already going down the dad joke train. So like throw, throw in the weird pet names in the chat too. <laughs> I love it. We've already had a request. Can the cat come on the show? I wish. Mum and dad, if you're watching, bring Min to my house. Uh, she can come and guest on uh, and come on the show. Um, and we've had some great shout outs to uh, for, for JR for coming on, which was amazing. Um, love, oh, someone shout out as well from the last bit. Love the Philip Sex shirt. So crazy, comfy information. Uh, T-shirt, sorry. So let's get into it. Products. Now, Alex, we kind of spoke a little bit before about how much you work with the product teams, but do you want to talk a little bit about uh the way that you see customers kind of asking for feedback and then you relaying it back to rick's team and the kind of the job that you see optics doing when it comes to this kind of role yeah yeah so the team um has all heard this bit before but to me us having the uh outlook of like we have to own the optimization story or the fin ops story with the customer is uh being stuck right like we are winning we are being successful we are scaling we are growing as a team when we have impact and when we can scale the benefit of, of different bespoke engagements that we have so optics has a really deep dive with our customers they come in and um really dig through the data and work through it with customers and find these unique ways to save, but really like how to put FinOps into their culture, right? And like how to have that cultural shift. And we don't want to do the same engagement twice, right? That's not the goal. So uh, we take those engagements and like the knowledge we learn about the customers in those and go to Rick's team and product teams. Um, and not only what we really try to do, and I think what hopefully Rick would agree, I I think in the last year or so, what we've done a much better job of is it's not just, hey, they want this feature. It's, hey, this is how they're using it. This is how they're applying it. And this is why I think this might help because it's really hard just to see a list of features and not understand the use case of it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And just a shout out to someone in the chat, um, the optics team rocks. We engage them often. Love this. <laughs> um, okay, so Rick, what I want to know from you is when, what kind of feedback from customers do you look for? Like, what can they give to you for them to improve the tools that they use every day? What are you looking for? Yeah. So I had a customer call yesterday where I uh, I had a series of questions to try to suss this out. So. Um, typically what I'm looking for is what's stopping you from taking recommendations? You know, we build a lot of recommendations. We build purchase recommendations, right size recommendations, delete idle recommendations, all sorts of stuff. Um, adoption of those recommendations is really widely varied between our customer segments and uh, based on customer size or maturity and FinOps and all of these different dimensions. So we want to understand what's, what, what do you need? What do you need to really get the outcome of optimization? Because it's actually not terribly hard to build a recommendation. There's lots of products out there. There's lots of recommendation engines out there. But how do you gain trust with engineering teams to really turn that into an operational program, right? Because we don't want to just build a product. We want to build a culture of using cloud the way it was designed and intended, which is scalable, elastic, flexible, and so on. So what's stopping you from getting that value? Um, you know, it's kind of like these silly repatriation conversations. Oh, cloud's too expensive. And it's like, well, if you fix provision everything or you lift and shift and leave it static for five years, it, it can be kind of pricey. So <laughs> we want to make sure everybody's getting the elasticity benefits of cloud. So let's talk about the barriers, the, the difficulties, um, what makes it a challenge, how we have to change culturally, what products or features do we need to build to make the culture change easier? What data do we have to bring into those conversations and recommendations to make them more obviously trustworthy? Um, so we focus so much time and attention on, on those questions and, and really go diving into the technical nuance of how to answer those questions successfully. But it's also because 
so I like to kind of make fun of IT engineers because I was one the first 10 years of my career, but IT engineers are paid to be very, very cautious with their environments and to not change anything if it's not broken, um, to, to, you know, keep five nines of uptime, right? And so coming to them and saying, hey, you know, you, you should size things differently is, is sometimes can come across like rude. <laughs> and so how do you how do you convert it from being rude to saying, hey, you size this wrong? What are you doing? To, <laughs> hey, we want to help you. Um, we, we think there might be a value for, for you here. And we know it's really hard to size things. So, you know, we'd like to help. So how do you turn an IT engineer who's defensive and protective of their environment into somebody that's excited and more of a fan of the product? Because they're like, oh gosh, this this is what I would have done. This is this is how I would have sized something correctly, or this is how I would have thought about buying a commitment, right? And so, how do we convert use cases into like delightful product experiences that solve FinOps problems? And uh, it's not easy, you know, there's a lot of product out there, there's a lot of capability out there. How, how do we make that delightful? So it, it's a natural, normal part of a mature cloud experience for our customers. Yeah, Rick, and uh, just to jump in, oh, just because I know we've only got much time, Alex, yeah. I'll, I'll come to you, but uh, Rick, do you want to get ready to demo Cross Optimization Hub? I'm ready, I'm Alex, ready. Ooh, Rick, yes, okay, good. Alex, go, go for whatever you want to say, sorry. I was just going to say, I think too, like hitting on that while you get it set up, Rick, is why it's so great, the different views and the different way to digest the data, especially in some of the new releases that came out at reInvent and, you know, data export and Curve 2.0 and Cost Optimization Hub, because like it's at AWS and as someone who supports our customers, we don't want to ever think that every customer or every persona wants to see it the same way. We want to give that opportunity to like find the right way that makes sense for you. Exactly. And Absolutely. just to throw up, just so Alex and Reid, everyone can benefit from the work Optics Teams does, even deploying the Cloud Intelligence dashboard in their accounts. Love it. Awesome. Let's show this to uh, Rick. I'm going to share your screen. There you go. Awesome. There we go. So this is something we launched at reInvent. Uh, this is called the Cost Optimization Hub. Now, um, we, we set out to go solve several problems in the optimization sort of area uh, industry, which is it's really hard to do commitment management and resource management at the same time. Um, so what we did is we built a new dashboard homepage in the console that brings commitment recommendations and right size recommendations and idle recommendations all together. And then it deduplicates the savings amount. And that's important because that's pretty hard to do, uh, especially if you've built your own optimization dashboards or homepages uh, in your organization. Because, um, for example, if you had a recommendation to delete something, but you also had a recommendation to add a savings plan or a reservation for that same resource, the amount of savings you get from those two different recommendations is not compatible with each other. And so it double counts the amount of savings because you might save 50, 60% from buying an RI or a savings plan for that resource. But if you wanted to delete it, you wouldn't buy that savings plan for it. So what the cost optimization hub does is it deduplicates all of the savings and keeps one recommendation per resource. Or if their recommendations are compatible, it'll keep two. So you might have, for example, two recommendations that are compatible with each other. You might have a right size recommendation and a savings plan recommendation. And what will happen is the cost optimization hub will reduce the savings amount from the savings plan value because you're at a smaller size. And so it not only deduplicates from a recommendation perspective, it'll actually lower the savings amount by, uh, you know, combining and comparing the recommendation types across each other. So now you have a savings number. So in, in this case, it shows 2000 a month for this, this uh, one of my accounts. Um, that is a, it's a number that's trustworthy. It's a number that's realistic and achievable for you to go get. And that's so important because I, I see this a lot of times with customers where they'll, they'll set like a, a savings target that is very difficult to get because it assumes you can take every single recommendation perfectly. And the savings number is hundred percent achievable and accurate. And that's not always the case because you might have scenarios where certain recommendations aren't realistic because you have product requirements or it's a backup environment or, or so on and so forth. So we want to make this savings number really a more realistic, trustworthy and achievable number. So our FinOps teams are not in a situation where they're trying to chase a target that they'll never hit. We want achievable targets. We want realistic outcomes that you can go get. 
And then what's really cool is on the bottom here in the smaller text, you can see not just the total savings amount, but what percentage of your AWS spend this number represents. So this is a cool KPI. You could take this data and, and you know, grab it via an API or uh, one day when we have exports, you'll be able to export this too. But you can now convert this to a KPI. Are you reading the comments? Because <laughs> oh, someone's no. just said feature export. <laughs> export. Yeah, working on it, working on it. Uh, this know, person's people... raised a feature request while watching the show. So we, we are listening, um, we are listening. Great feature requests, super insightful. And we, we are, yes, we will do that. Um, stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, we're excited about that feature. So with this, you can KPI it, trend it over time. And so now you have an ability to take your optimization initiatives and, uh, track behavior because like if, if you track the savings percentage or the, the potential savings as percentage of your bill over time, you can track behavior, do it by business unit or by account or by region or, or whatever you have by tag. Um, cause we have tag data and all of the cost optimization hub. And so like literally you can come in here and aggregate your savings amount by tag value. You pick your, your key and your value pair. For example, I don't know if I have any tags. Oh, I do have tags. <laughs> so um, you can pick your key tag value pair like owner or something like that. And then I only have, I don't have any owner tags, but I have the key. Then you can look at the savings potential by org right and then you can take a look at this percentage by tag value and then you can track by business unit how are people doing are people reducing the percentage are they reducing the total savings number right we want to really give you the tools you can kpi trend track over time because again like the harder part of optimization is not the tooling it's the behavior so how do we really help people by give them the data set that they can track and measure their own success on optimization but then trend it over time and say, how, how am I doing this quarter? How am I doing against my overall savings potential? Right. And then yeah. and new Alex, opportunity. I was, I was going to say, Alex, just, we've only got two minutes left, but I don't know if, if you have any thoughts about like how this, you think this is going to like affect how customers see data and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, I think, and, and I know, you know, Rick has talked to the team a lot in the, the process of getting here and getting to this place. And so, customers, especially customers that have worked directly with us, um, you your voice was heard in this, right? And so um, so don't shy away for continuing to have your voice in here. I think for me, it really is like uh, more, it's like the central place of it, right? I, I think I like to play with data and look at different ways to see data and see what kind of data I have. And I think that like the biggest benefit is like, having that central view and that like one view on here. Um, and I know from a customer standpoint that I've yet to have a customer that like hasn't started diving into it that isn't really excited about it, right? I think um, there's no harm in sh showing savings and and different and, and cool ways. And the biggest thing that I think Cost Optimization Hub comes in here and does and touches on what Rick said at the beginning is it's not supposed to be these like one-time fixes, right? It's a hub so that it's like part of your practice. It's part of going in and, you know, like having that central point of visibility um, versus like one-time cleanup or one-time this or that, because FinOps is truly a, a practice, right? It's not, it's not necessarily like these one-time exercises. Yeah, definitely. All right, last minute uh, also, Rick, what else do you wanna show us in the hub? Yeah, so um, once you filter um, or you aggregate based on what you want, and then you can add filters, say, say you were going to do it by tag or organizational boundary or something like that, your key value pair, mm -hmm. then you click view opportunities. And this is all of the individual recommendations that came together to aggregate into that savings number. So now you can deep dive on them. You can also group and ungroup them. There's this little switch at the top, right? So that way, if you want to look at all of the recommendations for a single resource at a time, and that's really cool because then you can, uh, you know, if you're going through and you, you're like, I want to solve optimization for these five resources, you can group all of the recommendations together for one resource at a time, and then you can investigate them. So if I uncheck this, it will explode oh, wow. out every single individual recommendation. And then if you want to group them back together, you can flip this back on and it kind of condenses it all back down into a much shorter list. 
And so now you can kind of go through resource by resource and optimize the whole thing all at once. And that's because it's kind of overwhelming. When you, when you look at a list of, say you have a big organization, you look at a list of a thousand recommendations, it's so overwhelming. So this way you can sort, you can condense all the recommendations, sort by highest estimated monthly savings here, which is the left column. Go find the highest savings recommendation. Say you have 20 minutes at the end of the day on a Friday. Go sort highest recommendation value. Go take five recommendations, right? Go move the needle a little bit. Yeah. And if you just take maybe five recommendations a week and go execute them, whether it's schedule a right size or, or delete some unused resources, if you have very limited time to go attack your optimization opportunity, that's okay. You can filter or sort based on the highest savings potential and still have very good results without having to invest just a, a tremendous amount of time figuring out how to build an execution platform or framework for your organization. Yeah, um, yeah. As you build into it, ideally you get there, but in the short term, you can just sort based on highest value and go just get that looking fruit. Awesome. That is a great finishing point for today. Um, that is your homework, everybody. Go check out Cost Optimization yeah. Hub. Go move that needle and uh, go make some small changes. Every little helps. Thank you so much to our guests today for joining and thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Next week, make sure you tune in to see what great optimization opportunities we have for you then. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Keys to AWS Optimization podcast. Don't forget, you can catch us live every Thursday at 10.30 Eastern time at twitch.tv slash AWS. And while you're here, why don't you hit that follow button to stay up to date with all our content and rate and review the show. Have a great day.